Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Heretic Pariah, which is an interesting knife because it is obviously an automatic knife, <clears throat> but also it's a manual knife. So this is a dual action manual and automatic knife, um, which is not something, it's not, not a brand, it's not, it's not a new thing at all, but it's not, it's definitely not something that we see a lot of. In fact, it's pretty rare that we see this type of thing. So this is very cool. Uh, this was sent in to me uh, for review, loaned to me for review by Joram. Thank you so much, Joram, for sending it in. I will link this guy right down in the description. It depends on when you're watching this. It might be available, it might not. The link will be down there to search for it anyway, so you can check it out if you'd like. Thanks to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. There's a link for Patreon right down below, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. This is a big knife, a big auto as well. Let's go ahead and measure it. Overall length of the uh, Heretic Pariah is coming in at about 8.75 inches overall. Blade length is coming in, eh, I don't know. You could call that 3.8. Cutting edge is coming in just shy of 3.75, maybe 3.6, 3.65, something like that. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. It's not just in length, right? This guy is a tall, thick fellow. How about up against uh, the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3? Once again, it's big. Last but not least, the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and the Benchmade Bug Out. How about up against some other larger sight opening automatic knives? I think these are knives uh, that people are going to want to know about. The Microtech uh, and Borka Blades Stitch, uh, and the Protech uh, Auto SNG. Uh, obviously, there are other large side opening automatic knives, but I felt like these probably would be two pretty good size comparisons. Yeah, the Pariah is huge, definitely. So, anyways, let's go ahead and uh, do a hardware check. I'll tell you guys right now, the action on this guy is, it, it's very powerful. There's a lot of blade coming out, so it's a bit more sluggish than like the Microtech Stitch. But there's also, I feel like, a lot more material. So it really, when the blade throws, it feels a lot like what a trebuchet looks like. Woof, right? Uh, a lot of blade. Very powerful, definitely. Um, but it's a little bit more sluggish. You, you can feel it. You can feel the recoil uh, in your arm when you, when you fire it. We're going to talk more about the action here soon. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. Get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of the description that talks about my tools. I think that pivot looks like it might be a T20, possibly larger. <laughs> it's bigger. <laughs> um, hang on. That's either a T25 or it's a T30. We're about to find out. Uh, that is a T25, which I have no problem with. Uh, very unlikely you're going to strip the pivot or the uh, bit at all. So I don't have a problem with that. The rest of these screws for the uh, liner here, thats those are the screws holding in the liner lock. I'm going to guess those are T10. Yeah. And then these guys back here, I think that one's for the stop pin. And then we have another screw for the pocket clip and probably just some more for structure, uh, structural integrity. Uh, these guys are T8. Kind of wish they were all just the same size, but you know, whatever, they're not T6. Um, I would not recommend taking apart a, an automatic knife with a coil spring in the pivot. Um, I have heard that uh, that's not super fun. If you've never done it before, not a good idea to just start on a, a an expensive knife. This is an expensive knife, right? But if you want to, because you're like, you know what, kick rocks, complex. If I'm going to buy it, I'm going to do what I want. Okay, if you're gonna do it, at least it's easy to get into. Probably not gonna be easy to put back together, but it's easy to get into, so there you go. 
Um, let's go ahead and do uh, carry profile. <laughs> so thickness up against the spark with pair of three. Yeah, this is a huge knife. Sorry, sorry, sorry. A fix is coming for the sh camera shake thing. This is a huge knife. Thick, long, tall. Insert your jokes in the comment section. Uh, up against the PM2 and pair of three, length and height. Maximum height, I think it clears. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's quite a bit taller than like the PM2 or pair. It's not quite a bit, but it, the whole thing is huge, right? Big knife. Not a knife that I would want to carry in athletic shorts, but if that's your thing, carrying huge knife and uh, huge knives and athletic shorts, well, then knock yourself out. Uh, the weight, yeah, it's heavy, 6.07 ounces. That's about the peak of what I like to carry. I think I'll, in some cases, go up to about six and a half, right? This is gonna be a big, cumbersome object to carry. Do with that information what you will. Um, let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness. I want to say I read, and I don't normally do this, but I was reading just to make sure that I understood everything about the internals. I was reading over some other specs and saw that the blade was listed as 155 thousandths. Let's go ahead and give that a shot here and see if that's the case. Uh, not by my measurement. Maybe I, maybe I misread. This is quite a bit thicker. Maybe, maybe it was listed as 165. I'm coming in at 170. It's a thick blade, definitely. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and um, talk about this guy. So yeah, uh, this operates with a liner lock, and I'll tell you, on this guy, there's a little bit of lock stick, and I always point out to people, even if it's a brand new knife, I understand, it's frustrating. Get a brand new knife and it's got lock stick, oh my gosh. Um, the lock stick on this guy, and this has happened to me many times before. This is a $600 knife. The lock stick on this guy was unbearable for a period of time. It was, it, it would hurt my thumb to disengage it, but I kept working it, kept messing with it, kept going. Took about a month, and now there's nothing. Absolutely no lock stick whatsoever. That has been the case every single time I have ever had an issue with lock stick. Uh, frame lock, liner lock, whatever. Plunge lock, axis lock, all that. In every experience except for one, which was a, uh, I've told the story many times, it was an old American Chavez 228 frame lock that had lock stick that was so bad, I was, you know, it would have needed a tool to disengage. And I had to send it back and they sent me another one, right? If you cannot disengage your lock bar without a tool, then you you know can send it back. If you're in any other scenario, any other amount of pressure, you know, any other level of force that it requires to disengage the lock bar, I would just say just let it break in, right? It's frustrating, but they got to get the geometry right, right? And then a lot of times this is steel. Uh, sometimes it's a carbonized titanium surface. They got to get that right, right? There's a bunch of other factors there. So this does have, I would say. Pretty aggressive lock stick, but it's not anything that I can't handle. The average person is going to be able to disengage that, right? If you've got enough, you know, strength in your hands to work against the coil spring, you know, as you're pushing, the, basically what I was doing there with one hand, you're going to be fine with the lock bar. It's annoying, I get it, right? But, um, you know, that's just, that's what we've got here on this guy. So uh, I do like that the firing button is recessed. I don't really feel like there's a need for a safety switch on side opening automatic knives. I mean, you know, if they're out of the way and they're not hurting anything, then okay, it's there, right? But um, with this button being recessed, there is essentially no way that it's going to deploy in your pocket unless you carry other things in your pocket besides your knife. And there's a chance it could get between the button and the inside of your pocket or the outside of your, you know, your leg and then you're, you're running, right, or you're scaling a building or whatever it is you're doing, and uh, it gets in there and accidentally depresses it, in which case if it's up against the back seam of your pocket and clipped into place, you'd probably feel it go click, right? And it's okay because the blade is probably not coming out very far, right? But that's extremely unlikely. So button's nice, recessed. It's uh, knurled, not to the point where it's obnoxious, but it is knurled. This has the track tech sort of, insert that we see on like the SOCOM Elite from Microtech and my Scarab also has it. I'll tell you, this stuff feels a bit less aggressive 
And the stuff on the Heretic feels a bit more aggressive and a bit less rubbery. So I don't know if it's different or what, but that's just, that's what I'm feeling there. I don't necessarily feel like it, it feels like it's lower quality. It's just, it is what it is, right? Ergonomically, yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, there's a lot to hang on to. The pocket clip is flat and has one of those ball bearings. So it's not really a, not really a hotspot in my book. If you're, if you're not wearing gloves, you, you're probably going to be okay. This is a uh, hard coat anodized aluminum, which is what we usually see with automatic knives. Um, and I don't have a problem with that at all. In fact, um, a lot of people might point out, oh my gosh, the stops, they're using the studs as stops on aluminum. Oh, they do that with the SOCOM Elite. This aluminum is plenty durable. It's plenty, plenty, plenty durable. It does not have to be steel or titanium. Um, for, uh, you know, that to, to work out correctly. Uh, people don't, don't give 6061 or 7075, is it? They don't give aluminum uh, enough credit, but this, this stuff is, is plenty tough. I don't have a problem with it at all. Um, but yeah, it's all nicely knocked down around the edges. Um, where there is jimping, it's not, you know, it's not super aggressive. Um, and it's all in the right place. This is actually a really comfortable knife to hang onto, and there's a lot of handle room, right? And, you know, they kind of have, suggestions this is this is what i like about like certain ergonomic profiles i like give me a suggestion right an open canvas is like well okay i guess what and then you know knives that have like four distinct locations for your fingers i hate that something in between where it's like yeah this is kind of where we suggest but we give you you know you can move around a little bit if you need to yeah that's great it's pretty comfortable it's not it's not mind-blowingly ergonomic but it's comfortable and the jimping is in the right place up here real nice um, the problem with a, normally with an automatic knife is that when you close it, you have to either use two hands or you have to be very careful about, you know, applying constant pressure to the spine of the blade so you can close it. The nice thing about this knife is, is once you close it, the spring, that's what you're hearing there, that snap is that coil spring sort of locking back into place and reloading. But now you have the option to just deploy it manually, which works really well, actually. That thumb stud is pretty, pretty aggressive. I don't think we needed something so angry, like this, you know, ninja star cactus thing. Like, you know, why? Just way less aggressive. Thumb, thumb stud would have been fine, but it does work. You can deploy it using the thumb flick. You can even do the reverse flick. Action's okay. Um, I'm tempted to give him a little bit of a pass. It's bearings, by the way, which I thought was interesting. It's running on bearings. Tempted to give them a little bit of a pass on, on, you know, feeling of action because they had to work in the bearings and the coil spring and the whole dual action thing. It, I mean, to somebody like, you know, if you're like a, a pro at all this, right, it may not be that impressive to you. But, uh, you know, it's like there's a lot to work in there in the pivot. You can see here it's got a detent ball ramp. So it's like it's pretty smooth in here. Not fall shut for sure. Still would need a wiggle. And then once it gets up on that ramp, it gets kind of, eh, it's okay, right? It's an, nothing, certainly far from impressive. But like for people, you know, if you're going to disengage it, then you can close it. You can certainly just sort of wiggle it shut or sort of shake it shut, right? But there's resistance once it gets to that ramp, which is why it kind of hovers around here. It works. And I think what outweighs like any any part of me that's like, oh, the action's not it. What outweighs that, what's more impressive to me, is that I have the option to deploy it automatically or manually, right? Just for whatever reason, if you that's what you want to do. Obviously, you deploy it man, you deploy it automatically, you're gonna be working against the spring on the way back down because the spring, the coil spring has to reset in order to launch the blade when you want it to. Uh, when you want it to launch. So there you go. Pivot's pretty cool. Uh, the pivot collar itself looks to be flamed titanium. And I'm not 100% sure on that because I know that steel will also turn bronze and blue if it's heated up. I'm guessing that's, I, they just tossed in a titanium pivot collar just to give it a little bit of flair. If not, either way, I think it looks pretty cool. There are a few different variants of this knife. Some of them are a little bit more expensive. And, you know, knowing Heretic, they do weird runs of things, right? I've seen kind of the you know, I've seen a bunch of different production variants that are all around the same price point. And then I've seen some like, you know, some some versions of this that are like double the price and it's kind of like a special, they do like special editions. And then they have full custom crazy variants that are like 1500 bucks or beyond that, right? Um, so 
Yeah, uh, they're, they're, as far as like the standard ones, they've got a few different variants. They're all, you know, a little bit. This is this is the based one. This is the absolutely the most standard one that you can get. Um, and all they're all rough, right around the same price point. Um, the blade is L Max, which I have no problem with whatsoever. Uh, as far as you know, like if you're going to hard use a folding knife, and the reason I do that and I don't define what that is, is because as soon as you define hard use, you have a whole bunch of people with like a billion different opinions flying into the com. I'm not going to deal with that. Um, as far as hard use folding knives go, right? Somebody's still going to force it through. <laughs> <laughs> um, LMAX is a, a, a great steal. I don't have a problem with that at all. Um, so that's fine. It says USA. This is a full USA made knife. Uh, December 2021. And then a serial number on there. Um, a little less than what Microtech usually puts on their blades. Still kind of a lot, right? The other side has nothing. Um, the finish on the blade is it's tumbled. And then we have these sort of horizontal grind lines right here. That's it's fine. Um, I, I do like the, the subtle reflectivity of the tumble. I think they do a good job of the tumbling. This is all knocked down here. I love the harpoon notch. I think that looks great. Curiously, it's one of the only tumbled knives I've seen where this edge is still sharp. That's random, but I, my finger is never going to be up there, right? Unless I'm like doing weird draw cuts like this. Probably not with a, a blade like this. Um, the cutting edge, it's definitely thick behind the edge. And they did that on purpose. It's not like they were like, oops, we made it kind of thick behind the edge. No, they did that on purpose. And when I say it's thick behind the edge, I don't mean that it can't cut. Knives that are thick behind the edge can still very easily, oh, all the way to the end, very easily slice. So let's not uh, let's not jump on that of who put the cup screen. No, it can definitely slice. It just is not gonna, you know, you're not gonna be able to do surgery on a grape. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I like the blade and plenty strong. Um, you know, as far as LMAX's composition goes, the, uh, geometry of this blade and how much, uh, material is actually carried out to the tip is fine. It's also a really tall blade. So it, while it is thick, it's not quite as thick as you might think, right? We're going to compare to the stitch. The stitch is absolutely thicker behind the, well, a little bit thicker behind the edge. I'm not going to say absolutely. It's a little bit thicker behind the edge, right? So yeah. Um, there is a part of me that's a little bit, with a dual action automatic knife, it's not something I'm used to. So I, you know, I keep, I, uh, for whatever reason, it, it confuses me because I'm like, is it, is it about to like, if I do this, is it, is this, is the spring going to fly out? Right? It's for whatever reason, it's such a simple thing, right? When it's closed, no matter what, it's ready to go, automatic or manual, right? So if you close it, that coil spring is ready to go. But for whatever reason, when I go to fire it, I'm like, eh, is it gonna, you know, is it gonna do that? Yeah, it is if you push the button, right? Every single time. There's no way to get it down into this position and then you push that button and it doesn't do anything. It's going, that, just closing it reloads the coil spring. So that's gonna be the case. The coil spring just doesn't activate unless you push that button right though. So you'll adapt to it. It's just kind of a weird thing because it's not, unless you're somebody who like regularly collects and uses dual action automatic knives, over the last few years you've definitely been limited. Um, it's just, an, it's something that you kind of have to mentally adapt to. Moving down back here, this all looks fine. I don't mind it. I kind of, honestly, this just doesn't do anything for me. I would have preferred that it just wasn't there and maybe they texture this or do something interesting with it, but it's there and it's not hurting anything. Uh, in fact, it, it works pretty well. Uh, there's a lanyard hole back here. Uh, that's fine. Um, the spine is seam construction, which is uh, usually what we see with automatic. Oh, I'm, well, except for, unless it's the, <laughs> I forgot that the, uh, the stitch actually isn't. It's a sandwich construction. Um, but usually automatic knives, side opening automatic knives are seam construction, um, which is fine. Looks okay. No big deal. Uh, the pocket clip, I believe, is titanium. Yeah, that's cool. A um, little nicer touch they threw on there that their competition is not usually doing, so that's cool. Um, yeah, this side's much the same as the front, except you have the two screws holding in the countersunk steel liner lock. Lockout. How's lockout? It's solid. 
absolutely not going anywhere. And that's partially because we have the exterior stops, right? That mitigates pressure away from the pivot, but also really tightens up that lockup. Uh, we have the lock bars locking in pretty, I'm not going to call it late, it's about medium, something like 60, 65%, something like that, where it's actually engaging, which you can kind of see up here, right? Um, and then there's a little bit of lock stick, which is kind of annoying, and then your centering is coming down to, it's pretty much dead on, right? It might be that the tip is just ground favoring over to the left, or it'd actually be to the right if you're like this, right? But the, the, the blade itself is actually centered. So, how much does this cost? $420 is the least expensive that I can find this thing. Wow! Well, the Microtech Stitch is $400, maybe a little more. These are between $400 and $440 now, if I remember correctly. Again, the thing that this guy's doing, this is, this, the, the Heretic in terms of overall, you know, fit and finish and overall quality outside of the lock stick feels, as Microtech does, a step up from a ProTech, right? So a lot of ProTechs are hovering between, let's say they're around the $250 price point, sometimes approaching $300. I love ProTech, but this, I feel like I'm getting a bit more here. Um, and so do I think that this is in Microtech territory? Yeah, I do. Um, but you're also getting the dual action function. I'll tell you, if this thing didn't have lock stick, because that's just annoying, right? And it's starting to really, you know, push against my thumb there. Um, and if the action was just a little bit better, which again, I can't fault them on too much because it's like, you know, they're working with a lot of stuff in there. Perhaps it will loosen up over time, not be so tight. You know, it doesn't necessarily feel gritty. It just feels a little tight, but I don't want to I don't want to unscrew these and, you know, risk, uh, you know, messing up the lockup or anything like that. If that were the case, I'd be like, wow, this is just, you know, spectacular. Um, but even as it is, it's pretty cool. And it's mainly because we just don't, we don't have anything out there like this. I'll tell you, you know what's funny I'm noticing? When I'm manipulating this thing manually, the lock stick is nowhere near as crazy. It's when the blade comes flying out and hits really hard, that's when, watch, that's when it's a lot harder to disengage. But just like this, no, it's nowhere near as hard, especially if I do that, or I bet if I just wheel it out. And you can see the engagement isn't quite as crazy. So it's 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 working, it's grinding away some part of the uh, the, the tang face or perhaps the lock face is some part of it is sticking when it's getting wedged way over there. So not that big of a deal. Eventually it'll settle in, smooth out a little bit where it's locking up, but still plenty dependable. So that might be the case with yours, who knows. 420 bucks, USA made, dual action automatic, especially considering, yeah, I mean, they got competition in terms of an automatic knife, but there's not a lot of, there's hardly any competition in terms of like a an American dual action automatic knife at all, let alone in this at this price point. I think this is pretty cool. Honestly, I, I like this a lot. It's definitely not gonna be for everybody, right? This is not an everybody knife for so many reasons. Mainly, it's gonna be illegal in a lot of places. It's a switchblade, uh, you know? A lot of people are still confused by that term. A lot of people don't like it when I use that term. It, it's a switchblade. I'm not, I'm not gonna like pretend away the term. No, the term exists, it's a word, right? We're not, it's not going anywhere. Um, but yeah, that's what it is. It's an automatic knife, a switchblade. It just happens to also be manual. It's also huge, making it, again, illegal in a lot of places, right? Um, and it's just not going to be an easy object to carry. But it is definitely functional. Uh, it's definitely something that you can beat on, something that's going to last for a very long time. Um, definitely. Is there a benefit to a knife that opens manually and in an autom automatic fashion? I don't know. I mean, you know, when you open a knife manually and when you close it manually, you don't have to work against that spring because once the spring is already set, right? Like here, I'm working, there's tension. Once that spring is set, I open it and I go to close it again. I'm not working against any spring tension here, right? Because it's it's set, it's, it's primed, right? So you can open the knife how you want. I think it, circumstantially, it could be beneficial, right? Um, if you just really need the thing to deploy very quickly and you don't want to risk, you know, missing doing this, 
Oh no, right? You push that button, it's gonna deploy. I don't know, kind of, right? Uh, the uh, the price tag of four hundred and twenty dollars. I I I I still feel like this and the stitch are overpriced. But then again, everything is up now, so it's really hard to say. Uh, my internal price gauge wants this to be like three hundred and seventy five bucks, and then I'd be wow. But it's not. It's four hundred and twenty bucks. Not the most offensive thing I've ever seen in the entire world, right? Especially considering it is a U.S. made, a real. US made knife, right? So those, those are my thoughts, right? Uh, I'll link it down below if you guys want to check it out. Uh, that's gonna be pretty much it today, guys. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I of course have lots of videos of knives. They're either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on the middle complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.